Hello everyone, Top Hat Waffle here, and welcome to the next stepping stone in the path that is us creating our first Counter-Strike Global Offensive level. Like always, we're going to start out by going to the Tools section of Steam and loading up Counter-Strike Global Offensive SDK. Once that's loaded, we're going to load Hammer World Editor. I'm going to just load the level that we were working on last time. Here is the level that we had last time, our small brick structure surrounded by four brick walls and a sky. Today we're going to be going over more complex geometry. So far, everything we've created has been a six-sided rectangle. Hammer has one basic rule when it comes to brush geometry. That is that it cannot be a concave object. Brushes can take on two shapes, concave and convex. An example of a concave object would be Pac-Man. Pac-Man is basically a circle with a pizza slice taken out of him. That caves in on itself. A circle is convex, which is what brushes must always be. This cube is a convex object. It never caves in on itself at any point. Using some of the tools that we're going to use later on today, I can manually force and reshape this brush to become concave. This is an invalid brush to the source engine and hammer. We can see that hammer does not know how to handle this back face here and it is drawing a plane where it should not draw that plane. If I save the level and then reload it, we'll see that Hammer has prompted us that we have one solid that was not loaded due to an error. It gives us the ID and it'll offer to resave the level for us. If I click yes, it has removed that object from the level due to it being an invalid object. This is the one rule that we have to follow when we create advanced geometry. If we want to create that same shape, we're able to do so, we just have to use two brushes instead of one brush. Now that we understand the basic brush rule, let's get started with editing and manipulating some brushes into some more complex shapes. The first tool we're going to look at is the clipping tool. The clipping tool allows us to chop, split, or remove part of a brush. A good example of this is let's put another doorway right here. Previously, we created two separate brushes for our doorway, but now we can just manipulate this brush to cut it in two. If we zoom in on our top view and then select the clipping tool, we can draw a horizontal line through this brush. The brush will turn white and red. This signifies what the end result will be when we press enter. The white portion of the brush will be kept and the red portion will be destroyed. We can click the clipping tool again or the hotkey of shift X to cycle through the potential modes. Once both sides are white, we can hit enter and the brush is now split in two. We can then resize the brush to be our door. Sometimes when you make a cut, you'll need to retexture the new faces of the brush. That was pretty easy to do. Let's do something a little bit harder. Let's add a window to our wall. We're going to start by doing something similar. We're going to make a vertical cut and then another vertical cut. So now if we deleted this, we'd have another doorway. Instead of deleting it, let's make one more cut, but in the side of it this time. Now with this cut in two, we can grab each part and raise it and lower it to end up with our window. Again, we may have to retexture the sides of the brush that are new. Let's add a ramp going up to the top of our structure. We don't have enough room here to make the ramp where I want it. We can use the vertex tool to create more room for our ramp. We can control click all of the brushes that we want to move and then press the vertex tool. When you're in vertex manipulation mode, all of your selected objects will have a slight gray tint to them. What I want to do now is make a box selection. This box selection will select all vertexes underneath it. If I press enter, the selected vertexes will turn red. Now, if I zoom out and then use the arrow keys on my keyboard, I can nudge these vertexes to the right. After I feel like I've moved it far enough, I'll select the selection tool and the change will be made. Now we have plenty of room for that ramp. First, let's select our no draw texture. Instead of browsing for it, I can just open the face edit sheet and select it off an existing brush. It's much faster than searching for it. Using the block tool, I'm going to make a rectangle and then create it. Switching to the clipping tool and then just drawing a line from one corner to the other, 
and cycling through the modes to get the bottom half to be kept, I can then press enter and I now have my ramp. Let's put everyone's favorite dev texture on there. If we search for dev in the texture browser, we can apply the wall texture to each side and a reflectivity texture to the top. Let's add a small track for water in our level to help us make sure we understand how the clipping and vertex tool truly function. Again, selecting our node draw texture, let's put a small track for water over here. Creating the brush and then getting it to about the height that I want. Remember that you can use the brackets or Alt A and S to adjust the grid size. Let's make a few cuts in this brush so we can get it to hold water and have a small ramp that we can walk up. Switching to the clipping tool, I'm going to make my first ramp cut right here. This will be the ramp that the player can walk up. Let's make another cut right here, but vertical this time. I want to keep both sides of this brush. Let's select the new rectangle and just lower it down a little bit. Having water sit on a flat surface doesn't seem really interesting to me. So let's make this be a small V almost. Grabbing the clipping tool, let's make another vertical cut. Now let's switch to the vertex tool. If we make another selection here, we can select these vertexes in the middle. Using our arrow keys to nudge downward, we can make a small track here for our water to sit in. Switching back to the selection tool, we can see the change that we've made. Let's quickly texture it. Now let's add some water. Water functions pretty much like a regular brush. But to start, we have to make sure that we use no draw on every side but the top. We can create a brush inside of our divot. And we want to make sure that it clips through the sides. Typically, you don't want brushes to collide with each other, but water plays by its own rules. We can open our face edit sheet and click browse, and then just do a search for liquid. Another good keyword is water. I'm going to select overpass water. You may notice that some of these do not have a preview, and the ones that do are these weird blue purple ones. These are referred to as a normal map, and we'll cover those later. To see how water textures actually look, there's a few videos that you can find online that will show how every water looks, or you can just add a whole bunch of them to your level and see which one you like best. I'll right click to apply the water texture, and we can see that we somewhat get a water texture off in the distance. This is how it will look in Hammer, but once we get in game, it'll look much better. Now let's spruce up this back wall by adding some decorative arches to it. Let's select our no draw texture, and over on the right, after we select our block tool, we'll notice that we have two options here under our entity selection. We have primitives and block. These are the default settings and is how we create blocks. If we expand the dropdown under objects, we'll see we have a few other options for what are called primitive prefabs. Let's take a look at the cylinder. The cylinder is exactly what it sounds like. It's a cylinder. The 8 underneath represents how many sides the object will have. If I wanted to put a cylinder pillar here, I make the outline as if I was going to create a regular block, and then choose the amount of sides. I'll choose 16. When I press enter, I'll have a 16-sided cylinder. I'll texture it quickly by just applying the texture to all sides, and then, out of habit, I'll apply no draw to the bottom. Now there's a new challenge that we have to overcome when we deal with complicated brush objects. This is the visibility engine that we briefly mentioned last time during compiling our level. For now, the quick explanation is anything that's complex and not just a block, we should turn into what's called a function detail to help the visibility engine. To do this, you select the object and then press Ctrl T. It'll open the object properties that we saw when we created our light environment and it will automatically be on function detail. You can just close this out after you hit it. It'll be a function detail when it turns green in your wireframe and says func detail over it. We'll cover what func detail truly does in a later session. Let's create a few more pillars. This next pillar I'll create with only eight sides so we can see the difference. 
You'll notice that the 8-sided and 16-sided pillar look very different. You should be warned though that there is a brush limit in Hammer as well as a face limit. You typically don't have to worry about it, but if you constantly create cylinders and other high-faced objects out of brushes, you may hit that limit and encounter an error when you compile. Moving to the back wall now, let's change from cylinders to arch. The arch tool is a very fun prefab that we can use to either create arches like in Dust and Inferno, or just create them decoratively on the wall. I'm going to create an outline. A trick to know with the arch tool is that you should always create a full cylinder. I want to click in the viewport that I want the arch to be active in after I create it. This is a reflection of the setting that we set in the first video when we chose reorientate primitives on creation. When we hit enter, we'll be presented with the arch properties preview. I only want half of the arch like it's pictured here, but if I hit OK, we'll notice that the arch is skewed in the wrong direction. I personally find it easier to create the arch as a full circle and then just do a little math to figure out how many arch sides I need. I only want eight arch sides for my top half, so I'll just double it. Now when I create it, I can just use the clipping tool and delete the bottom half. I'll pull the arch into the level and then position it where I want. Since this would be considered a high detail brush object, we want to turn it into a function detail. Let's quickly texture it. Lastly, I want to add pillars underneath it. I'm going to do this with just boxes. After we're done working with our arch prefab, we want to make sure that we change it back from arch to block. Once again, I'll texture this. And since it's tiny, I'll also want it to be a function detail. Now we can have these repeat across the wall by using the shift drag copy. I'll copy this over here and then select all three objects. To make moving these easier, I can go to Tools and Group, or Control G. Now whenever I select one of these objects, all three objects will be selected. I can now hold Shift and drag with my mouse to create copies of these along the wall. It looks like one is clipping through the wall. We can again use the Vertex tool to extend this wall outwards. Let's select all of these objects in our top view by making a box and then pressing Enter. Now, we can deselect these arches since we don't want to manipulate those. Going to the Vertex tool and making a box over these edge vertexes and then hitting Enter, we can nudge this wall out in our top view. We can see that it's going to end right at the end of this pillar. Switching to the Selection tool, we can see that that's the exact change that I wanted made. There's a few other primitive prefabs that we can use, but I'll let you play with those yourself. The most common ones that you'll end up using day to day is arch, block, and cylinder. After all the changes we've made, let's compile it to see what it looks like in game. Once the game is open, open our console, and then type map, space, the level name, and then hit enter. Click continue and then join a team. We can see that we have our cylinders here, the 8 and 16 sided one, along with our murky overpass water. We have our nice arches along the back wall, and our ramp that goes on top. Inside of the shed we have both doors and our window that we made with the clipping tool. I hope you enjoyed this look at the clipping tool, vertex tool, and some advanced brush creation methods. Thanks for watching and join us tomorrow for the next one.